So this is a quick update of my Tesla solar charging station. Previously, I was using this to mine Bitcoin, um, but I did not have enough energy, especially during winter. Um, the output of my 10 kilowatt array is obviously reduced because of the season. But even though it's winter, this system is running my Tesla perfectly. And I drive a lot. Um, right now I'm running the Model Y Performance. I was gonna use this system to charge up the Model S Plaid, but that car broke and I had to return it. The main drive unit failed and I have some other videos on that. But this video is just gonna go over what I'm using right now and how well everything is working. We have two LV6548s in parallel um, with split phase output for 240 volts. And every single day I pull about 9,000 watts from this when I'm charging the Tesla and it runs it flawlessly. Next, these two all-in-one units are connected to a massive 60 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And it looks very ugly, but with this channel, I have to test lots of batteries all the time. And for the last few months, I've been testing out these server rack batteries. So even though it looks very ugly, it allows me to test everything that people send me, which is very nice. Because in my opinion, to actually understand how these new batteries work, you have to use them. You cannot do a single test in one day and say that something's good or bad. Um, the current regulation features on the Seplos BMS, I had to learn by actually hooking these batteries up and testing them every single day. So even though it's ugly, it works perfectly for what I'm doing. But in the future, I'm gonna actually collect all of these server rack batteries and I'm gonna make it really pretty. I'm gonna make a really nice system. Um, I'm not gonna use SO cord. I'm actually gonna use conduit and everything else. But for now, this is great. I can easily change anything I want and swap batteries out in seconds. Now, as you guys can remember, we built this battery with grade B cells and it can store 15 kilowatt hours and these are all lithium iron phosphate. So far, they have worked perfectly. There has not been a single disconnect moment and they've supplied my system with lots of power. And if you guys can remember, these cells were swollen, but because of how they're configured and they're not touching each other, I don't see any issue with it at all. I do not recommend people build with grade B cells, but this is the cheapest pack I own. This was 17 cents per watt hour. Also, grade B lithium iron phosphate is much safer to use than grade B or used or recycled NMC cells. I've seen people confusing lithium iron phosphate with cobalt-based lithium ion chemistries, and that's very strange and somewhat dangerous. There's lots of packs on YouTube and in general online on forums and stuff. I mean, just imagine if your BMS had a shorted FET and it cannot do a disconnect for an over voltage event. Let's say one of your chargers goes to too high of a voltage, it will all catch on fire. That is not true with lithium iron phosphate. If you overcharge this, it will vent and it will not be fun to clean up, but you're not gonna have a self-propagating thermal runaway event, which makes these way safer. So you cannot compare these to NMC or recycled lithium ion batteries from laptops or other sources. These are totally different. But yeah, this pack is worth great and it's very safe to use, so I love it. The system also has three Jack Appear batteries and I cycle them every single day. And when I mean cycle, I actually mean cycle. I go to 0% and then I charge up to 100%. And that's for charging my Tesla. So the entire capacity of the battery goes into my Tesla every single time I use this system. And then I have a low voltage disconnect programmed into the LV6548 and it works flawlessly every time. This is a new server rack battery, but I'm gonna review this once they actually have inventory. It won't be for another month or so, but this is a very nice battery as well. And overall, this is a very simple system. It would be nice if I had a combiner box, but each individual string on the solar input, you can have multiple arrays. So that means I would have to have multiple combiner boxes, which would be plain silly, especially with my solar configuration. So it's unfortunate that we have a lot of wires here, but it works very well. Also, I like all the wires not touching each other. I've seen some other builds online where they just cram a bunch of um, high amperage DC cables inside of small pieces of conduit, and that just doesn't seem very smart. Um, I want them to not be touching each other and I want equal length conductors. So in this sense, this is a very well-designed system from a performance standpoint and an efficiency standpoint. The hotter your cables are, the higher the resistance and the higher the losses. So personally, I prefer this. Let's see how much power we're pulling right now. I'm charging up the Tesla. So almost 8,000 watts right now. 
So yeah, we're just powering the Tesla and not my mini split heater. Oh, that's right. It also powers my mini split heater during the winter. And it's also, you know, air conditioner during the summer. But I just hate how ugly this system is. I just hate seeing all of these wires. There has to be a better way. So I'm gonna really think about it and rebuild this to make it as pretty as possible. But right now, efficiency wise and safety wise, I love it. We've got two T-Class fuses right here and every single pack has its own fuse or disconnect of some sort. Also, this system runs 24 hours a day. Even if the batteries are too low to charge the Tesla, these are still gonna be on to charge the batteries because these have the MPPT. Also, I use this system for my Porsche Cayenne e-Hybrid and that could pull 40 amps for charging its battery at 240 volts. So this one ran it like a champ and I've never ever had a disconnect because it was overloading these inverters. It has worked flawlessly the whole time. Anyways, let's give an update on this AC300 over here. So this is my favorite Blue Eddy ever. I have tested all of them. I have like three of each model and the AC300 is the only one that I actually really like. Like you can actually use this as a standalone system and it has been running 24 seven since I got it. I have not had a single issue. I have found something wrong with every single product they have. It's usually software issues and very small issues, but this one hasn't had any of those. And I use all of these cables to charge up my video equipment for these videos. And it has its own separate array. And right now it's fully charged and even during winter, it can power all the loads that I throw at it just fine. And a lot of times I use this with an extension cord for my videos to charge up batteries because if I over discharge the main system and I need all that power for the Tesla, then I get energy from this system instead. There's also USB-C chargers down here. And yeah, I still have not had a single issue with this model. It's, it's a great unit and it, I think it looks cool and it's easy to move and yeah, it's, it's a nice little thing. So I have some sad news. I sold my Model 3 Performance to one of my best friends and I love that car. But for daily driving, I'm just gonna use the Model Y Performance and then I got rid of the Model S Plaid. So this is the only electric car I have and I power it entirely off grid. I park this here every single day and it's not connected to the grid at all. Also, I wrapped the roof of it. Um, one of my viewers suggested that I do that and that is a great idea. So thank you so much for telling me to do that. Now this is a personal opinion, but I love the 650 adapter for 240 volt loads. So this outlet goes over to my off-grid system and this Tesla has the 650 adapter. And for all future electric cars I buy, I'm gonna try to get by with the 650. This is a NEMA, what, 1450? Yeah, 1450 if I need it, but this has one extra conductor. The 650 is so simple and it carries 50 amps and it's easy to wire up. So personally, I like this one a lot better. And check it out, that's the wrap job on the roof of the Tesla and it works great. Now I wanna give an update on this solar panel array. So these panels are resting on bricks. There is nothing holding them down to the ground. And this weekend we had some high winds I mean, they were really blasting the side of my house and these solar panels, they slid down from the bricks a little bit, but that is it. That is the most I've ever seen it move from any high wind situation. Obviously I have a building behind me and there's a wall right there, but if you have this at home, you can easily just throw some panels on the ground and you'll be set. Obviously this configuration is not ideal for most people. You should spend the money and get an actual ground mount array. One where you have poles in the ground and it lifts the panels up like three or four feet off the ground. That's very important. But for me, I test panels, I test batteries and this is perfect. I can take all these panels out in like 20 minutes and put new panels right in and see how well they do on my MPPT. So this is great for me. And they produce a lot of power surprisingly and I rarely clean them. But yeah, this is all I need to power my Tesla every single day. Also, I turned off my ASIC Bitcoin miner, but it keeps this shop at 85 degrees Fahrenheit all winter long, which is really nice, but that is powered by my grid tie solar power system and not my off-grid system. I also bought a new house in a place where there's very cheap electricity and it's not Washington State. I'm actually not gonna mention it on the channel ever because I don't want people to find out about it, but I have my other Bitcoin miners all there and it's freezing cold there, so it's perfect. Out here in Las Vegas, it's a lot warmer 
warmer. So it's, it's very difficult to run those miners unless I'm just heating up the shop. Because during the summer, I'm not gonna be able to run that thing when it's 120 degrees outside. Or I might, we'll see, I'll, I might find a way. But yeah, just a quick update, this system rocks. Like it runs all day long. And I love it. I can throw batteries in or out of it. I can swap the panels in seconds. It's a great system for experimenting with. And yeah, it's really fun. I love this thing. I also got this battery cart that can lift 500 pounds. So check this out. I love it. I bought it off of Amazon and I use it every single day. And that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know what you guys think below. I just wanted to give a quick update and talk about how well it's working. But yeah, not a single hiccup. Both inverters communicate all day long and I charge my Tesla every single day with this system. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching. Bye.